This is the mid sagittal section of the brain. Above this line is the cerebrum. In this case, this is the left cerebral hemisphere and the diencephalon forming the left side of the cerebrum. This is the corpus callosum connecting the two cerebral hemispheres with the septum pellucidum separating the, the lateral ventricle on the left side and the right side here. This is the brain stem and this is the cerebellum. These are the lateral ventricles connected by the foramen of Monroe here to the third ventricle in the area of the diencephalon. This is the cerebral aqueduct connecting the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle. Identify the parts of the diencephalon. This is the area of the diencephalon. The third ventricle has been cut and open here in this sagittal section. This is the thalamus with the interthalamic connection. This is the area for the hypothalamus with the pituitary stroke attached to its inferior surface. This small area is called epithalamus with the pineal gland attached to its posterior surface. And below that is the subthalamus. This is the cerebral aqueduct connecting the third ventricle here to the fourth ventricle. Let's identify commissural fibers in this specimen. Again, this is a sagittal section of the brain. The largest commissural fiber collection is in the corpus callosum here, with its rostrum, genu, body, and the splenium. This area is for the phonics, another commissural fiber collection. And here is the area for the anterior commissure and this is the area for the posterior commissure just below the pineal gland. These are the main commissural fiber tracts in the brain. Identify the corpus callosum. It has a rostrum, genu, body, and a splenium. Corpus callosum attaches the two cerebral hemispheres together. Over the corpus callosum, you can identify the cingulate gyrus. This model represents the ventricular system of the brain. This is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. This is the body of the lateral ventricle, posterior horn of the lateral ventricle and the inferior horn. The anterior horn and the anterior part of the body lies in the frontal lobe. Posterior part of the body lies in the parietal lobe and the posterior horn lies in the occipital lobe. Inferior horn 
lies in the temporal lobe. You can identify the third ventricle here and the cerebral aqueduct leading from the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle. This is the fourth ventricle, this is the cerebral aqueduct and this is the third ventricle. Now I am going to cut this brain specimen to show you the anterior, posterior and inferior horns of the lateral ventricles. After removing the lateral surface of the left cerebral hemisphere, you can now identify different parts of the lateral ventricle. This is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle in the frontal lobe. This is the body of the lateral ventricle. And this is the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle going into the occipital lobe. And this is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle lying in the temporal lobe. In the flow of the lateral ventricle, you should be able to identify the choroid plexus. Choroid plexus is there to produce the cerebrospinal fluid. We are going to see the arrangement of choroid plexus in this specimen. This is the upper end of the left cerebral hemisphere. Now I will remove that part. When I remove the upper part of the cerebral hemisphere, you will see the body of the lateral ventricle on the left side. You can identify the choroid plexus on the flow of the lateral ventricle here. This is a full brain specimen. This is the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe and the temporal lobe. This is the cerebellum and the brain stem. I am going to cut this brain horizontally about 1 cm above the inferior surface of the frontal lobe. In this horizontal section of the brain, you can identify the head of the caudate nucleus, the lentiform nucleus with the putamen and the globus pallidus, the thalamus and the internal capsule. This is the third ventricle between the two thalami and this is the cut rostrum of the corpus callosum and these are the inferior horns of the lateral ventricles. This is a horizontal section of the brain. In this specimen identify the anterior horns of the lateral ventricles the septum pellucidum between the, uh, the two lateral ventricles, 
the rostrum of the corpus callosum, head of the caudate nucleus, the thalami on either side, third ventricle between the thalami and the lentiform nucleus. Between the lentiform nucleus laterally and the head of the caudate and the thalamus median lies the internal capsule. Internal capsule contains projection fibers. There is an anterior limb, a genu, and a posterior limb to the internal capsule. The lentiform nucleus has two components, putamen and the globus pallidus. You can identify the splenium of the corpus callosum at the back here. In this sagittal section of the brain, the brain stem has been removed to get a clear view of the medial aspect of the temporal lobe. Identify the parieto-occipital sulcus and the posterior part of the calcarine sulcus here. The two sulci meet and continue here. This can be called the anterior part of the calcarine sulcus. There is another sulcus here which is called the collateral sulcus. Between the collateral sulcus and the anterior part of the calcarine sulcus, this gyrus is called parahippocampal gyrus. At the anterior end of the parahippocampal gyrus is the uncus. If you cut open the parahippocampal gyrus, you will be able to identify the hippocampus. These, these parts contribute to form the limbic system.